Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing a review of The Mysterious Mr. Quinn by Agatha Christie. This is actually my final unread Agatha Christie book, so by reading this I've now read everything Agatha Christie wrote under her own name. I do still need to read the books that she wrote under her pseudonym, which was Mary Westmacott. I want to say, I've read The Rose and the Yew Tree and there are some others, but they're like all kind of romancy, and I'm not one for romance. However, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about The Mysterious Mr. Quinn. I'm going to read you the blurb, and then I'm going to go through, check out some of my tabs, and then share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, who is the slight, dark, mysterious Mr. Quinn? Where does he come from? Man of magic, friend of lovers, voice of those who can no longer speak for themselves. Why is he teamed with a rich, likeable Mr. Satterthwaite to unravel hitherto unsolvable crimes? In these 12 fascinating and ingenious excitements, death is not the greatest evil. So, let's go through. Uh, Mr. Quinn, Harley Quinn, obviously reminds me of the Margot Robbie or whatever, even though I don't think I've ever seen any of the movies. I'm not really a superhero fan. It also makes me think of Colin Dexter. He has a book called The Silent World of Nicholas Quinn, one of his uh, Inspector Morse novels following a deaf dude. I just wonder whether whether he was inspired by the name there. So here we start off on, uh, these are all these are all uh, short stories that can kind of link together as well. I mean, they all follow Harley Quinn, uh, but they all act as like standalone mysteries. So we start with the coming of Mr. Quinn, and we start actually with Mr. Satterthwaite, and I, I like this little description here. Where Mr. Satterthwaite was glad that the young people had gone to bed. He was not fond of young people in herds. He thought them uninteresting and crude. They lacked subtlety, and as life went on, he had become increasingly fond of subtlety. Mr. Satterthwaite here, he says, many dark women dye their hair blonde, but he had never before come across a fair woman who dyed her hair black. Obviously never met an emo then. Uh, Mr. Quinn says, uh, the evidence of history is against you. The contemporary historian never writes such a true history as the historian of a later generation. It is a question of getting the true perspective, of seeing things in proportion. If you like to call it so, like everything else, a question of relativity. This little observation I thought was quite cool, talking about uh, like people predicting the future. It's illegal to tell the future in this country, isn't it? Said Richard Scott. Moira persuaded a gypsy into telling her fortune, but the woman gave her a chilling back and said there was nothing doing, or words to that effect. Someone says, has it ever struck you that civilization's damn dangerous? Dangerous? Such a revolutionary remark shocked Mr. Satterthwaite to the core. Yes, there are no safety valves, you see. So here we have chapter three of the Bells and Motley, which is uh, essentially, um, what's his name? What's his name again? Harley Quinn is his uh, local pub. This bit made me laugh. What is this place anyway? Demanded Mr. Satterthwaite fretfully. Being a little gentleman considerate of the feelings of others, he substituted the word place for godforsaken hole, which had risen to his lips. And it's Kirtlington Mallet, which I wonder if that's like Sh Shepton Mallet. There's an old saying, happy the wooing that's not long doing. And then uh, Mr. Quinn, he has this habit, he likes to like look back at uh, events. He thinks that you can get a better picture of what happened from looking back at an event from like after some time has passed than just looking immediately back on it. Uh, so. Uh, he says, no, no, said Mr. Quinn, smiling. Since, in our imagination at least, we have power over time, let us turn it the other way. Let us say the disappearance of Captain Harwell took place a hundred years ago, that we, in the year 2025, are looking back. It's just interesting, a hundred, hundred years ago or whatever. This bit was kind of amusing. Franklin Rudge went off unexpectedly at a tangent. Do you know how old she is? She told me, rather sporting of her. I should have guessed her to be 29, but she told me of her own accord that she was 35. She doesn't look it, does she? Mr. Satterthwaite, whose private estimate of the lady's age was between 45 and 49, merely raised his eyebrows. We have this note for one of the American characters. For one coming from a prohibition country, he had shown no lack of appreciation of champagne. And then one of the Frenchmen, uh, he, he exclaims, A thousand thunders, which is mille tonnerres. Uh, which I have seen be used here and there. Uh, I think it was used in uh, Le Chien de Baskerville, uh, The Hound of Baskervilles, when I read that in French. Uh, so I always like to spot the ejaculations in uh, Christie's work. While he was resolving these things in his mind, the other spoke, realising somewhat belatedly that his single ejaculation so far might be open to criticism. Yes, maybe it would be open to criticism. 
And then uh, in The Man from the Sea, somebody wants to commit suicide, and Mr. Satterthway kind of stops them. Uh, he says, I can hardly attach myself to you like the proverbial limpet. Sooner or later, you would give me the slip and accomplish your purpose. But you are frustrated at any rate for this afternoon. You would hardly like to go to your death, leaving me under the possible imputation of having pushed you over. And so he decides not to jump off the cliff because he doesn't want Mr. Satterthway to have the murder pinned on him. This bit here at the start of uh, The Voice in the Dark uh, tells you a lot about the character. If, in, if entries in Who's Who were strictly truthful, the entries concerning Lady Stranley might have ended as follows. Hobbies, getting married. She had floated through life, scheduling husbands as she went. She had lost three by divorce and one by death. We get this uh, line from Lady Stranley, she says, uh, What could be simpler? I never get on with that sort of person. You know, earnest men with beards and usually spectacles. They bore me terribly and I'm quite at my worst with them. Okay, then we have a medium who apparently is speaking through the voice of a red Indian. She says, Indian Brave says you good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Someone here very anxious speak. Someone here very anxious give message to a young lady. I go now. The spirits say what she come to say. Uh, great, great quote from Mr. Satterthwaite here, he says, So many things are beautiful before we've reached them. Some of the ugliest things in the world look the most beautiful. And we get another pretty sketchy line here. Uh, oh, hire a car, said the Duchess, scandalised. What an idea. Who's that nice looking man, rather yellow, who drove in a four-seater just before lunch? I expect you mean Mr. Tomlinson. He's a retired Indian judge. That accounts for the yellowness, said the Duchess. I was afraid it might be jaundice. And this guy says, All women are alike, Satterthway. Can't bear to hear another woman praised. Molly is a very good looking girl, and so of course every woman has to have a knife into her. So yeah, troubling sort of statements aside, it's just not the best really. It is very early in Christie's career, and it is worth reading just to get, I guess, an extra dimension on her work. Uh, I didn't enjoy it as much as, say, Poirot or Marple. I also didn't enjoy it as much as just general standalones of Christie's. Uh, so it was a bit of an anticlimax for it to be the last Christie book that I read, but I am still glad I read it, and I always say that even Christie at her worst is better than most others at their best. So I, I'm not, I can't give it anything lower than a, a 3.5 out of 5. It was all right. So there we have it. That's what I thought of The Mysterious Mr. Quinn by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.